I came out of that wood bag. And I start crawling towards the door. Mm -hmm. and so when you're crawling, were you closed? No. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm totally naked. naked. Uh -huh. With some stickers on me. On your hands? On my hand, on my forehead, on my chest, written my name. Mm -hmm. Now this guy had me coming from inside. So he decided, let me check what is moving from the semi -more. And we collide, pop on the door. This guy ran away. What? So he ran away screaming or something? Yeah. Uh -huh. Wow, wow, wow. I'm a fufuka, you know. And they were anointing me like, he used, I don't know how to put it. They were anointing you? Yeah. Using anointing oil? Using anointing oil. Mm -hmm. They were anointing me everywhere. You devil, say your name, where do you come from? People are praying and I'm there. And the doctor was like, you don't know what you're talking about. We, I have, I have the document that is already confirmed. This guy, yes. I confirmed I'm a doctor, and we, we cannot tolerate this nonsense. And it was like, let's finish the thing. My name is Dennis Maura Wanjiko, mm -hmm. aka Katoi, they call me Katoi. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my stage name is C.O.G. Katoi. Mm -hmm. I was born in a slum called Mukuru Kwarube, uh, on the other side of Embakasi. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, been, I've been raised there, school there, yeah. that's me. And, I'm born again and I'm passionate with ministry. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is what I, I'm so passionate about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm also a rapper. It is many, many, many touch in the body could forget about. Ile a past in the body could forget while while in the cascos while they die long bro while he pass. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I used to be a dancer. I was a dancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was this competition that came, you, you, if you remember Sakata. Sakata Dance Challenge. Sakata Dance Challenge. Yeah, sure. It I was do. a competition. Mm -hmm. So we decided to go and try our luck for that competition. We went for the audition and we managed to qualify. You were shortlisted. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And for me, my role on in my crew was a b-boy. I used to be a b-boy. A b-boy? Yeah. And by a b-boy you mean? Have you ever seen those guys who spin with their heads? With their head? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You, you use your head on the ground and the ground that there's some gymnastics spin. and stuff. Yeah, exactly. You must have been very flexible. They call it 360. Mm -hmm. You go round and round and round. That was my role in my crew. You know, B-Boy love to show up. Mm -hmm. yeah. What can you do? Maybe I tell you do it. When you do, I do it better than you. That's how they they feel like, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing better. Mm -hmm. So there was that guy who spinned and whatever and the b-boy they had to show up you know what your crew is not better than my crew so here i am spinning and on that spin something happened i had like a twist on my back your back uh, yeah uh -huh. just a simple twist i thought maybe it was just a simple thing like you know when you had a twist and you feel you are not in pain. Mm -hmm. You you won't question yourself. You won't even think there is something that has happened. So here I am. It was on a Saturday, so I went back home. Mm -hmm. and I slept well. 
and everything was okay. Sorry, sorry. Who can do me? Yeah, I do, I do. Na panda stairs. Actually, one thing that people don't know, I do everything for myself. Na for ganguo, na pika, everything. Kila kitu. Wow. Yeah. So every Sunday, I used to wake up very early in the morning, then go to where I used to service, where I used to worship, and prepare the sanctuary, cleaning up, wiping dust, mm -hmm. just to make sure the service is it will be okay. Mm -hmm. So immediately I sat on the sanctuary, I started sweating. And you know, it's a sweat from nowhere. You're sweating and you're not working. Mm -hmm. The fever is high. Uh -huh. You know, I was confused actually. And within no time, mom, my leg was very stiff. Mm -hmm. And I was out of the control of my leg. So I couldn't even control my leg. So it was like I'm struggling to to control my leg, but my leg is doing the opposite way. Mm -hmm. It's struggling even to resist from what I want. So what happened? I went straight to my place. I don't know what was going with me. So what I did, I I made a prayer and mm -hmm. I told God like God. Uh, just give me a sleep and I I hope when I wake up I will be okay. Mm -hmm. The time I came to walk up, that's when my life changed till today. Mm -hmm. You see, for me, my mind is on a Sunday and this time, that I'm waking up, I knew it is Sunday evening or something. So I've, I've opened my eyes. Now I wanted to, to see what time was it. And I had a kafona kabambe, kasi 118. It was just near me. And you know, you have to pick it with your hand and get to know what time is it. So I tried, like you see how you wake up in the morning and you want to pull yourself out of the bed. You step down. You step down, then maybe do. And I, tr I was trying to step and I was like, my legs are not moving. What? Yeah, uh -huh. my legs are not moving, but from inside I'm moving. But there is no result. The, the outside. will is there, but the actual the movement. Action. Yeah, there not. is no the the result outside is you can't see. But me from inside, I'm trying to get out of the bed, but no result. So I was like, "What's happening to me? Am I dreaming or something?" So I decided, let me pick my phone then. It, I was trying from inside to pick my phone, my phone, and from outside, no report. The only thing that was moving was my eyes and my voice. That was the only thing that were active. Mm -hmm. So immediately I realized I think I'm paralyzed. And it is a moment whereby I will never forget that moment because for me, I never, I never wanted to imagine that now this is the reality I'm not dreaming. This is the reality I remember crying very heavily with a lot of bitterness in me and asking myself a lot of questions and 
at the same time asking God a lot of questions like God I was serving you how could you even let me go through this and I never got the answers now because I wanted to to know what time was it there was this young man who used to smoke bang at my doorstep and every time he would come to smoke i used to provoke him like you go and smoke somewhere else stop smoking at my door post and now this time that i'm waking is the time that this guy is smoking outside so i called him gebeji Would you mind coming in and yeah why not so he had to take the bang to in the bang and came in so i asked this guy would you mind giving me this phone what so that And i the can the phone is right beside right you. beside me the phone uh-huh. was just right beside me and he was like you my guy are you crazy you see The phone is just there, just to pick the phone. What's wrong with you? And you know, for him, he he had no clue what was happening to me. Mm-hmm. And does he give you the phone? You know, after after like one minute, because of what he told me, like you're stupid. You just pick the phone. and now the plus the situation i mean it was it took me to a emotional and i was emotional again yeah and you started and crying or something crying tears and he was like my guy are you crying just because i've refused to give you the phone that is next to you and he was cut it off Wipe your tears. Let me give you the phone. And he tried to give me the phone, and I said, "Just tell me the time." Now, because he could have just said it's 2 p.m. or whatever, he said, "Now, look at it. This is the time." Mm-hmm. And you see, your phone has up there. There is time. date and man uh-huh. so i saw two days on thursday on thursday on thursday and it's around 5 pm is it my phone or so, so i was confused maybe my phone is not giving you the right time the right time mm-hmm. and the right date because in my mind i think it is on a sunday you slept on a sunday at around 10 11 now you're waking Now, up it's thursday thursday it's around 5 around 5 that was another moment of emotion how is it possible i even asked him when is today he told me today is on a thursday can't you see what I been celebrating from Sunday to Thursday. For me that was not even possible. I never thought it. something can be that real. I sleeping from Sunday to Thursday. No, no, I had to tell the guy. You know what? This is what I'm going through. Yeah. Uh-huh. Does he help you? He was not believing me. When I told her I cannot move my legs and I cannot move my hands, I think I'm a paralyzed. And he was like, "You know, I was with you on Saturday. And I saw you. You haven't been involved in any accident. How could be this possible?" And that was the reality. Mm-hmm. I used to live in a in a plot where by it was a family plot my my me my uncles my aunties 
Then I told him, just go and give them the, whatever you have seen, just tell them. And the Benji, he did so, he went to my uncle and told him, hey guys, my young guy is paralyzed, you should check on him. Where was your mom then and, uh, and dad? No, my mom was not there. Mm -hmm. And even my dad, my dad and my mom got separated when I was a kid. Oh, so yeah. that's why I was being raised by my grandmother. Oh, by your grandmother. Uh, oh. I even used to think my grandmother is my mother. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. My uncles and my aunties were like, that's just a malaria or something, he will be better. Within. So they are giving me time to be better. First of all, I stayed at that place for a good three months, mm -hmm. indoor. Indoor? Indoor. Without getting any medication? Without getting any medication. Uh, people are waiting for, for like, you see, me getting better. And that was not happening at all because I needed a medical attention. Mm -hmm. That's how I was. Because this guy then used to put me outside for sunlight because I couldn't do anything. So he would take you outside so that you yeah. at least get warm, get some yeah, good sunlight. Yeah, get the sunlight and whatever. And something I could actually happened when I was outside, when he used to take me outside for the sunlight. You see, when you're outside and you see, it's a family plot, and you're just the next, the next plot, and he's like, wow, one of my uncle came and passed me, and hi, hi. And he went to, he was going to his brother. Uh, my dad uncle. I overheard him saying, what? Guys, we need to be ready. This is not just normal. This is HIV. And we need to be ready for this. You know, like, they never see any hope for me. And that's the time that I overheard it, that I told the Benji, I will never go out for sunlight. Reason being, I don't want to hear something else that will break my heart more than I have already so broken. Bad. More than I'm broken. Mm -hmm. Because it was so painful to hear that from someone that you thought he will encourage you, like, you bro, man, you'll get well. This is not the end of your life. This is not the end of everything. Mm -hmm. Here I am in the hospital. And my first week I went in a coma. And that was it. Now the time that I'm out of the coma, I was vibrating. The whole body, the, the whole of my body was vibrating. 24-7 and the, the doctors used to tie me on that bed, my hands, my legs, so that I wouldn't vibrate and fall from the bed, so they used to tie me. And then that word, the word that I was, was that word was a six bed word, and, and every bed I have was having to patient expect me because of the condition that I was. So for, for you, I believe you were tired, so you yeah, couldn't share a bed I couldn't with share a bed with anyone. Mm -hmm. Now, early in the morning, they used to call registered around 6, 6, 30 to 6. 30 to 6 in the morning? Uh, in the morning, so that the, the, the night shift, the, the the doctor who was a night shift is checking out okay. and making sure all the patients are all right, uh, all right and alive. Mm -hmm. And it was blah, 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 nothing, blah, 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 nothing, nothing, nothing. To me, 
present. How? Okay, the doctor had to check the other patient. And this doctor was very shocked because all the 10 patients were dead. All the 10 were dead? All except the, you? Expect me. Uh -huh. Except me. Mm -hmm. So, he was like, what's happening? 10 at a time? No. Okay. Maybe it, it is impossible. Mm -hmm. Now he has taken out the bodies or whatever outside the ward. And the other patients were brought in. Another 10 patients. Now the next morning, the doctor is coming to check, as usual. And he was blah, 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 blah. No one, on me, present. The second time? This is the second time. 10 more are dead? 10 more are dead. What? In one night. And these people that are dying, they are not even worse than, uh, than I, I was. Some of them were even walking, doing their own stuff, taking themselves to washrooms, back, feeding themselves. They looked okay. And all of a sudden, they are dead. How? How? Now this doctor was like, you guys, you are surviving and people die. And it is not even like they are dying today and then another guy dies tomorrow. They are dying in one night. And he was like, something is not okay here. Someone is sacrificing people. What? And this is not okay with him. He came and said, on my face, to me on a way you come away. You come here pretending to be very sick, yet you have come to kill people. To make sacrifice. This was not okay with him. And I couldn't blame him, actually. Because we don't think the same. You know, for me, I knew I was clean, but from his side, something was wrong. The other people were taken out, and now the other patients were brought in. Another ten patient. This is where. So another ten were brought in. Yeah, uh -huh. this is not the third time. Uh -huh. And here is the doctor coming to call the register as usual. Again in the morning. Again in the morning. Please don't tell me they die again. They did. They died. The third time. The third time. What? You must and have been in for a rough ride now. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now I knew this would be worse. And now the accusation was not even hiding itself. Mm -hmm. It was like, you guy, we know you. You have come here to sacrifice people. And this doctor had to call some creatures intercessors, anyone that was available, and anyone who knew, like, I know how to pray, I know how to cast out demons out of someone, they were called. So this, this afternoon, all the beds were taken out of the ward, and I was placed at the center of that, that ward, ward uh -huh. on the floor, and there was a, around of 30 people in that world praying and they were anointing me like you see, I don't know how to put it. They were anointing you? Yeah. Using anointing oil? Using anointing oil. Mm -hmm. Just like how the prophet had been ordained. Mm -hmm. They anointing a food on their head and whatever. Now for me it was the old body because 
I never had any clothes except a shirt. I just a, a small shirt, a boxer, and I anoint me every you devil. Say your name. Where do you come from? People are praying in um, there. You see those many drama thing that they do, like they are praying for a demon to come out of someone. That was the the experience. And I was, yo, my guy, I'm not the devil. Slow down. Slow down. I don't know what you're talking about. I even don't know why you are praying this prayer. You should be praying for healing for me, not casting the demon out of me. So here we are. They finished with no result of any demon talking inside me how they expected. Mm -hmm. And here we are, taken back, the, the, the bed has been brought back at around four people are checking in again. There was another patient brought in. Other patients were brought, were brought in, in the fourth time. The fourth time, and now they placed a Bible, a New Testament Bible beside me. What? <laughs> Beside yeah, the be devil in quotes. Be, uh, yeah, <laughs> because they believe the Bible is everything. Mm -hmm. And that is the truth. The Bible is, is, is a, it's not just a book. It's a living world. Mm -hmm. one. So they placed on my side. And now this is the fourth time. The, the, next the, uh, the next morning, the doctor is checking up. Again, the register. Hold up. Yeah. Please don't tell me again something. <laughs> Something happens. Something, the fourth, yeah. Something the fourth has, time now is the checking the, the register. He's checking the register and it was like blah 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 present, blah 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 present. It was like, yeah, we are doing good. The prayers blah, worked. Yeah, the, yeah, blah blah blah, eleven present. And for me, Dennis Moura no answer. What? Yeah, Dennis so Moura the, no answer. <laughs> The fourth time. The fourth time. The fourth time it's uh, the ten now are present. Yeah. Mora is not answering. Mora is not answering. Clearly the previous day's prayers are working. Are very working. What? Now uh -huh. he's coming to check like now oh, let me check. Let me tell you the doctor confirmed I'm dead. That doctor confirmed I'm dead. <laughs> And I was done. The usual preparation of a dead body. Goodness me. Yeah. So here I am, dead on a body bus. Guess what? And I was not taken to a mug where there is these freezers you could be. Put put in, in a I was taken to a semi mug. Semi mug. Uh -huh. Whereby now this body, the family will come, identify the body, then the body will be taken to a funeral home of their choice. Okay. Now someone is dead again, so they brought the body. The guy, the semi mug attendant, was bringing the body in. And he took the body and the raw on you, on me, and uh, pop. Your system was activated again. Yeah. I was like, what's happening with that? In my mind, I'm in a hospital bed. Mm -hmm. What's happening? Or I was confused. So I wanted to un cover myself from the bracket because for me I knew Nico Kakitanda and as I tried I noticed this is not a blanket and I'm naked so I had to open the zip slowly and came out I came out of that wood bag and I started crawling towards the door <laughs> And so when you're crawling, were you closed? No, uh. I'm, I'm totally naked, naked. Uh -huh. with some stickers on my, on, your hands? on my hand, on my forehead, on my chest, written my name, 
mm-hmm. and whatever. So I'm crawling towards the door, and this guy. Were you scared, first of all? Let me tell you the truth, oh. I was. You were? And I was thinking, this is a dream. Mm-hmm. Because how, how have I ended up yeah. there? And I'm alive. You know that is the how. I'm alive and I'm, I, I thought I was in bed. For me, I, I saw that I was in a bed and not in a body bag. How did I end in a seminar? I came out and now this guy had me coming from inside. So he decided, let me check what is moving from the seminar. And we collide a pop on the door. This guy ran away. What? And he was alive. He saw the walking dead. The walking dead. And that was another big attention to the hospital. hospital. So he ran away screaming or something? Yeah. Uh-huh. Wow, wow, wow. I'm a Fufuka, you know. Could he miss me. This is someone that he was confirmed dead. It's like when you're in a bar and then you had the, like the guy on the casket, poof, will you stand there? <laughs> I don't know. Even but, if, but maybe I'll even hang around if to get a story. Wife, will maybe, you? I, maybe I might hang around to get a story, a story for my from... members, Tuko family members. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so unreal, my brother. Yeah. Uh-huh. And this guy was, I'm a fufuka. I'm a fufuka. And every... These people would who and then go on that side and see that guy naked. And everyone was looking at me in a distance, from a distance. What? He's truly back. Yeah. Now there was this nurse who used to come through for me. You know, I never had family who came to see me. As I stayed there for eight good months without no friends, no relatives, or whatever coming to know how I'm doing. What? The only person who was coming through for me was this particular nurse. Do you by any chance remember her name? Yeah. That name we never get up to me. Irene. 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 Uh-huh. And here she is. She comes your way. She, she's coming on my way when people are running away from me. Mm-hmm. She's coming with that. A be- something like a bed sheet and a wheelchair. She covered me with the bed sheet and she pulled me on a wheelchair and he was taking me back to the ward. The doctor was happy. He was like, where are you taking this guy? And Is it the same doctor who who you had an experience with before? Yeah, yeah. The same you, we know people like yeah, you. We know people like you, okay. you are coming here to do sacrifice. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was like, Irene, where are you taking this guy? And he was like, you know, okay, what do you want us to do with the guy? He's alive, and we cannot assume this. And the doctor was like, you don't know what you're talking about. We, I have, I have the document that is already confirmed. This guy, I confirmed I'm a doctor, and we, we cannot tolerate this nonsense. And it was like, let's finish the thing. What? Let's just finish the thing. Those are words because, from a doctor. Yeah, because. People who you are see. meant to uphold the sanctity of life. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But I but I believe they are not not every doctor is that. It's like that. Mm-hmm. 
I do what I believe. Irene, she's there. You know what? If you will go on and finish it, I'm out of it. And Irene, she, she walked out actually. And she left you at the door? Yeah, now because she can't go with me because you see, this is the, the boss talking. And, this is, uh, and, and he's, I'm not part of it. And now this doctor is like, if Irene is not in, this cannot happen. Because I may do it and it may lead me to something else. So I was taken back to the ward. Now I'm asking Irene what was happening and why did I end up in Atemi Mog? And he said, you have been there for three days. At the Mog, at that same Mog. And we were waiting for people to come, maybe, maybe your family will come and confirm the body. And this and this happened. And I was like, what? And that was the reality. Whoa, it's startling how someone can go through so, so much. I have to pull the handbrake up on this one and uh, it's a bit too much to digest. So join us for part two. This particular day, I decided, you know what, enough is enough. Let me take it. God, I have to take my life. There was this jerry can half paraffin. I poured it, I poured the paraffin in every part of my body. So I took a matchbox, with a matchbox sitting on the floor, having a conversation with God. You know what, God? If you really know, I haven't served my purpose yet. Get me out of this situation. Get me out of what I'm about to do now, now, now.